Hi, I'm Teresa Martin from Lower Cape TV, and welcome to the second season of The Minds of Summer, produced in partnership with the Cape Cod Institute, which brings leading thinkers and doers from around the world to its renowned week-long workshops right here on the Outer Cape. We all know these kids. Heck, they might be our kids. The seventh grader who can't get out of his own way and forgets his backpack at home every single day. The tenth grader who seems unable to complete or even organize her homework. The first grader who seems to break everything in his path. The fourth grader who has emotional tussles and meltdowns on a regular basis. We get told they're disorganized or lazy or too sensitive. If they just tried harder, if they learned self-control, if they prepared better. But maybe it's not so simple. With me today is Dr. George McCloskey, psychologist, teacher, clinician, and author expert on learning and behavior, especially on an area of brain activity called the executive function. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. Let me start by asking the great they that say all these things. <laughs> you know, are they wrong? Okay. Um, well, you know, actually I think they are. <laughs> it's, uh, we, we do have this idea, and it's a, it's a pretty simplistic one, that, um, that these are all choices that brains are making. They just simply have this ability to be able to do what we're asking them to do, mm -hmm. and uh, they're just being lazy, unmotivated, and could do it if they wanted to. Right. But the, the, fact, the real fact of the matter is that um, brain development isn't that simple. Uh, this is really a process that unfolds over time, mm -hmm. and um, the brains learn how to do these things more effectively through trial and error mm -hmm. and through learning, also through education processes. Um, and so we really have to be interacting with, with individuals, with children, uh, to help them understand how to get, how to accomplish the things that we want them to do, and how to develop uh, strategies for doing them. Right. Well, you use the term executive function, and I've seen that term a lot. It's almost like a buzzword, and the description that's always used with it is, it's like, comma, the CEO center of the brain. The heck does that mean? <laughs> well, it's uh, yeah. I mean, that, and it's the one that's most frequently used. So we, it's sort of, and it's becoming cliche to the point yeah. where everybody say, "Well, okay, then uh, you have executive function problems. Your CEO isn't working well." Right. Um, but that—that's a little. Again, it's it's oversimplifying. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea here is that there may be an ultimate CEO of the brain. In other words, there may be a source of inspiration and um, and motivation that you know that you follow. A literal biological center. Um, well, there's a drive. There's a drive to kind mm -hmm. of give meaning to life and to, and to have a purpose mm -hmm. and, and we are finding that there is there are biological bases for that yes um, but there's a lot more detail that we have to fill in mm -hmm. here so in, in getting there to that ultimate uh, CEO mm -hmm. you know uh, I think of it more the metaphor I use more with individuals is the idea of a multinational mind corporation you know the idea <laughs> being that it's, it's not just the CEO it's the whole management structure mm -hmm. so the idea here is that you've got multiple layers of management and you have, and, and in some layers, some levels, you have directors that don't do anything but direct other directors. Mm -hmm. So we have this, d these differentiated levels of direction within the brain. The simplest one being the first level. Now, just like management, at the first level of management, you've got a lot of different managers. If yeah. you are a multinational corporation, you have offices all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and each of those offices is going to have a manager <laughs> in it, right? And so, and the CEO has no idea what those managers are doing on a day to day basis and doesn't care. Uh, he's got his responsibilities for the ultimate, mm -hmm. you know, goal. But these individual managers are responsible then for making the workers do what they need to do. Think of the workers as the rest of the brain. So if it's a little, if it's limits, all these little, <coughs> little creatures Lots running around. <laughs> <laughs> and, and think of them as neural networks. And so each of these okay. little, these little um, uh, entities are really neural networks that you have to direct and drive to get things done during the day. Now, without a manager, then you, you wake up in the morning and you'll pretty much do things. And we can, we can do many things. Um, on a regular basis if they're habit. If we've mm -hmm. done them before and we know how to do them, you can wake up and pretty much go through your entire day with the habits that you've learned mm -hmm. and you've done and not really use your frontal lobes, your executive functions to drive or direct your behavior much. You said frontal lobes. That's literally a part of your brain? Part of the brain. The, the, for, the foremost part of the brain is what mm -hmm. we call the frontal lobes. And that's where executive functions are housed. Mm -hmm. The idea here being that there's, there's parts of the neural networks within the brain mm -hmm. that are responsible for this directive capacity. Right. And those are in the frontal lobes. Okay. So sometimes I use that that, that um, short shorthand version of, of calling the frontal lobe functions. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of other things frontal lobes do too. 
um, not just executive okay. functions. But these, so the managers are housed pretty much in the frontal lobes, mm -hmm. and these uh, these are developing over time, and they they enable you then to take control, and instead of doing um, things that you do automatically and you do it every day, you know, out of habit and routine, right. you're able to alter your routines to change um, and to do things differently to self-regulate, mm -hmm. uh, and the, that self-regulation that you do maybe in response to environmental demands, you know, things that are happening around you. Right. Um, if you just keep doing the things you usually do, you're not going to have success, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to say, gee, maybe in this situation I should do something different. And see, now when you begin asking questions of yourself, you're really engaging that self-regulation process. So it's really about the questions you ask yourself during the day. So how do, but how do we get to this point? You know, is this something learned? Is it something that chemicals release at different growth stages and it happens? I mean, you have a baby, baby blob. Yeah. You know, baby cries. <laughs> I mean, I know babies aren't blobs, but, you know, they're, they're kind of unshaped, still not fully shaped humans. Right, right. How do we get from there to talking about, Self-actualization. <laughs> sure. Well, it's a long journey, um, but it is really there. There's a set of neural networks within mm -hmm. the brain that are um, the the rudiments of those are there from birth. So we have our basic uh, frontal lobe circuitry. There's some of it laid down already mm -hmm. at birth, but then throughout life you're developing that. You're building on top of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, primarily creating more connections, interconnections between the neurons that are there. So as we grow and develop, we connect more. We make more of these connections. And mm -hmm. the more of those connections you make, see, it's sort of like those levels of management. Right. They have to integrate so that you have to send the message down the system uh, to get to the next level of right. development. But really, we're kind of building it from the bottom up. So that CEO we're talking about mm -hmm. isn't there when you're born. Okay. okay. So he's really uh, he really emerges later on uh, as you be, as you keep developing. But the lower levels, those first mm -hmm. line managers, are the ones you kind of build at the at the first what, level what, of the what process. What are some of those? What are they? Well, uh, the ability to inhibit impulsive responding, the ability to focus your attention and sustain it, mm -hmm. um, your ability to plan, to organize. Uh, all these are considered, I have about 33 of them, so there's a lot of managers at that level, okay? <laughs> and you can organize them into little subgroups of seven clusters, so right. sort of like seven business, well, seven businesses. So something you try, like one of them was pay attention. I'm thinking, you know, again, yes. let's go back to the little baby, and you go, hi, baby, baby, hi, baby, look at me, baby. Yeah, is, and is so that that's your training. Yeah? You're, yeah, absolutely, because the, the key to these neural networks is to use them. Mm -hmm. and then get feedback about the actually that performance. Now, the, the environment sometimes gives you feedback about that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you start using it, you get what you want. But then also, we, we provide the feedback, you know, as parents, as adults, mm -hmm. as teachers. Uh, we guide the brain as a development, so we ask it for to do these things for us. Right. And then the more the brain does them, the more effectively the brain can do them. But some brains have difficulty doing that, you know, mm -hmm. learning them and learning how to do that, mm -hmm. and need some assistance in developing strategies or assistance in guiding the practice. Mm -hmm in how to do that. Mm -hmm. And these are the brains that we often then attribute the idea that they're just r irresponsible or, you know, right. um, not doing, uh, lazy and unmotivated. We like See, to apply moral failings. Moral failing, <laughs> character assassination, yes. I kind of call it. It's, like, <laughs> it's just like the idea that it's, like it's, all, it's all your fault and you just, you know, wake up and start doing it. Uh, but mm -hmm. the reality is those brains need to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And they need support. They need some, some assistance with it. And so that's the key. That's where, so we step in here and now we help the brain develop better. Right. Uh, and, get, and gain these capacities more. But see, our model now uh, becomes one of external control. Mm -hmm. And the idea now becomes we're going to guide your brain and we're going to tell you when to pay attention. We're going to tell right. you when to plan, when to organize, when to inhibit impulsive responding. Mm -hmm. See, but now the problem with that is you're their frontal lobe. You're their executive functions. So when you say don't hit your sister. Yeah, you are, you're, 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 you're guiding the show, you know, and or else. Don't right. say, or else. Now, and so we have that situation where individuals are placed in that situation. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to guide them. We're trying to tell them and give them direction. Now, what, and, and that works, you know, externally you can control brains. And it works really well when you put some reward or reinforcement in there, right? right. Uh, here's what you'll get if you do that. You know, don't hit your sister, sister and you you'll, get, you'll get this, yeah. right? Or if this is what will happen to you if you do hit your sister. So negative consequences, right. too. The problem then is that some brains don't know how to do what you're asking them to do or you uh, accept your frontal lobe, your, mm -hmm. your executive function direction. So now what happens is they, they always get the punishment. They never get the reward. And this gets very frustrating, see, for everybody. Because it's like, I thought, you know, I, all I have to do is set the consequences for you and you'll get right, in line. Right. And see, now those consequences become that form of external control. Mm -hmm. But for those who can't get on board with that, we assume that it's a failing of theirs. You, know, you have the stubborn child. You have a stubborn child. You, and maybe a conduct disordered child. Maybe there's something wrong with their brain. But the reality for, for most individuals mm -hmm. in this situation is they don't know how to get that out of their brain. 
they don't know how to get that performance. So now the teaching that we do with those brains has mm -hmm. to be more specific. And for some individuals, they really don't know how. For example, modulation is one of the things we do. What's modulation? We often, well, we often talk about inhibition with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And we talk about how you have to inhibit impulsive responding. But if I tell you you can do something and then tell you you can't do it, mm -hmm. see, that's not about inhibition because inhibition is don't go there in the first place. So if I have an individual that I say to them, um, I want you to work in groups mm -hmm. and you can talk among yourselves while you're in your groups, right. okay, and then we get together, we'll talk about this. And so they go to their groups and now uh, the teacher calls one student out and says, you know, you, you need to stop talking. And the, and the student will be very upset and say, but you told me that I could, that I could talk. And now the teacher tells me he's very uninhibited. He has problems with inhibition. I'm saying, well, but you told him he could. So inhibition is don't even go there in the first place. Right. But you told him he could. You basically turned it on. You turned it on. You turned it on. So now the modulation is you need to, you need to adjust the volume control. Mm -hmm. See, so modulation is adjusting the intensity of your perceptions, your feelings, your thoughts, or your actions. Don't stop them. Uh, don't even go there in the first place. It's once you're there, know the range, the mm -hmm. acceptable range. And if you're yelling, I'm going to tell you that you have right. to bring your voice down. Not stop, but bring your voice down. Right. So we're really looking for individuals to modulate. But for some, so I've said to some teachers, uh, one teacher just, you know, out of the blue said, you know, shut up. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the kid is just stunned. And, 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 he, and I tap him on the shoulder. I'm observing. And I said, do you know why she told you to shut up? And he goes, no. I said, you have no idea why she said that. He goes, no. She's doing that all the time. She doesn't make can do things. And now some, I can't. She's driving me crazy. <laughs> And I'm thinking, well, she said the same thing about you, so it's kind of a two-way street here. Mm -hmm. Lots of traffic on the street. <laughs> but, um, uh, and so, uh, it's, you know, the reality was he was talking too loud. Right. And so, now the teacher could have, and I said to him, you could try this. You could say, uh, Billy, are you aware of the fact right. that you're yelling? To which he would have said, no, I'm not. <laughs> right. To which she could have said, well, um, class, was Billy yelling? And, uh, and they'd say, yes. And you say, well, not talk, everybody talk as loud as Billy is talking. See, do you hear that? It's, it's really loud. Right. If we talk that loud, then we can't talk among ourselves. So you really have mm -hmm. to use your indoor voice or maybe a library right. voice, right? If you don't do that, you're going to have to stop. Uh, you know, use your indoor voice, library voice, modulate, or you'll have to stop. So mm -hmm. see, here's where you're at. Monitor where you're at. Find the line. Get under it. And if you can't get under it, you have to stop. The problem with that intervention, though, was that Billy was always told to stop. The reason being, he didn't know how to modulate his voice level. So he never even learned he had to modulate his voice level. There you level. go. He, he was unaware of the need, unaware of where right. he's at, but also un, unaware or just not able, not capable of mm -hmm. modulating his voice level. So we had to teach him how to modulate his voice mm -hmm. level. And see, w now with that instruction, now once you, once you understand what to do, right. you can now do it. But if you don't understand how to do it, See, you're always going to get the consequences that are negative. You're never going to get right. a good reward. And so this gets very frustrating for everyone. So very often our models are ones where we set up the conditions and we say, now, here's what we want you to do, and we'll reward you or punish you. Mm -hmm. But we never take it the other step and say, wow, you don't know how to do that. But if we don't you, teach yeah. you, we, you're never going to get anything out of this. So my, my, you know, most of my emphasis and the efforts that I mm -hmm. do is educating the brain to do what it needs to do to understand these managers, mm -hmm. understand how to use them and how to regulate them. In other words, how to train the workers in the brain to respond right. to the manager. Well, do these workers know how to come online at a certain time in development? And they, 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 you know, We've actually been developing, for the first line of management, self-regulation, right. we've been developing that from near birth. Mm -hmm. It's developing. Uh, six months olds can actually inhibit a little bit, right? And there's a range for all yeah. six month olds. You know some that do it better than others. Two year olds, right. better than six month olds, right? Again, a wide range of how well two-year-olds two do it, but right. they do it better than six-month-olds. Four years, better than two. You know, 16, better than four. Mm -hmm. 40, better than 16. You hope. So we're, we're, we hope, we're <laughs> hoping. We're hoping that happens. And so we're developing these capacities throughout life. Um, we just get better at using the same neural network that we had when we were younger. Mm -hmm. It just myelinates more. Mm -hmm. uh, it strengthens more, and we use it more effectively. Right. Or not, as the case may be mm -hmm. for some individuals who don't know how to activate that network and to get attacked for them. And so right. that's where the education part comes in. Well, let me ask you something, because we have these things that are developing, and we have this sort of social structure. Mm -hmm. And our social structure in some way assumes certain kinds of functions. Yes, right. The ability right. to modulate, <laughs> right? Yes, you, right. In, in, in and you first should be able to do that by, by the time you're five. five. You should have all these things right. in place, right? And we also have this trend where, you know, kindergartens are suddenly learning things that first graders used to do. And right. We keep pushing down the standards and the demands so we've know, got further a, further down. So sort of social structure. We've got this developmental thing happening. Are they in mm -hmm. sync or are we creating problems? Well, they, they're really not in sync. And I think there's really some, there's actually two things happening here, which is one of them is that as society becomes more complex, we need mm -hmm. more of these executive functions right. to function effectively. 
But as the complexity increases, you need more time to develop them mm -hmm. to understand how to use them. So while, while, we're, in, while we're really, in, the, the brain is increasing its timeline for what it needs to learn mm -hmm. and how it needs to learn it effectively. Because we need to learn more of it. Yes. Right. We're, we're pushing down the demands for getting started with it sooner. And so now, when you, if you have a maturational delay mm -hmm. in the development of these capacities, we're going to notice that much sooner. Right. And, and you're going to look deficient. Even though you're just, basically, all you're doing is developing slower, mm -hmm. um, we think there's something wrong with you. Right? And so now we're not allowing the time necessary for that brain to mature because we're making demands on it. You, know, you need to start doing that now at age five. Right. You know? uh, and if you think even just like a 30% developmental delay, that can be significant. At six, you look like you're four with some of these right. capacities. At nine, you look like you're six. 15, like you're 10. At 21, you look like you're 14. Now, you, you appreciate how devastating that can be to some right. brains you right. know, if, they're, if the demands are like that. Um, and so we, we see for some brains, they need that much time to kind mm -hmm. of get on board, which means they're, they're not going to be able to handle the demands that we're placing on them mm -hmm. at the age we're placing them if we wait for that brain to get there. So for some, in some situations, mm -hmm. um, at 30, you look like you're 20. Right. So if you haven't been able to go to college right, mm -hmm. um, at 18, you might have to wait till you're 30 mm -hmm. to have the executive functions you need to get through the college right. experience. Now, if we educate your brain, we may be able to speed that development up somewhat, mm -hmm. right? But it may still be delayed. So the idea here is you, we've got a time period where we have to be more flexible with the individual and allow the possibility that it's going to just get, it's not forever, mm -hmm. just longer than you'd like, right? right. It's going to take some time well, to get there. I mean, is, it, is it okay? Like we seem to have this sort of one size fits all mm -hmm. kind of model. Right, everybody's 13, they all go to middle school, or 12, 13, right. and you go to middle school, right? And so it's okay to have differences? Well, see, cause every time we do that, that shift from elementary to middle, right, middle right. to high school, there's a ratchet up on the demands for self-responsibility right. and, and responsibility, right. which means uh, greater demands on executive functions. And for some individuals, they're just not ready to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not a matter that they won't be able to, it's just they can't right now. And now, orientation, uh, Education, right. uh, you know, allowing them to, to get time to get used to the situation and know what to do. Educating their brain on what to do helps mm -hmm. a lot. But for other individuals, they're still going to be behind their peers mm -hmm. for, some, for some amount of time. And unfortunately, we, we expect everyone to be able to be there. You yeah, know? Yeah, we now, do. we wouldn't do that in physical development. See, we do mental development, but mm -hmm. not physical. Um, if you have students that are much different in terms of physical profiles uh, and you're in physical education, uh, and your boys, you might not, you might be uh, trying out wrestling, yeah. and, but you're not going to ask a 200 pounder to wrestle a 60 pounder, right? right. That's not right. going to work. Um, and yet, the, and so you, you know that's not right. But that those those kids shower and they go to another class, and then you go into science or history, and everybody has a six week project that they have to do. Right. That'll be doing six weeks. See, so now you just assume that those that mental development is is the same for those individuals, and they're going to be able to plan and organize right. to get that project done. But just like the physical development, there's differences in mental development. Mm -hmm. And the individual that looks um, physically less developed may have the best executive functions of the bunch. Right. And so it's, when you just look at individuals, you can't tell from their physical appearance who has the better executive functions. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem because kids that look older, we think that yes. they're older. We, you know, yes. we, we attribute um, these kind of, uh, of mental capacities to them when they may not have yeah. them. And that's a real problem. So we really, but, and it's a struggle for teachers too because when you look at a child, you don't know their mental development the way you know their physical development. Well, I actually remember this really clearly. When my daughter was little, she, she grew a lot. She was tall. Mm -hmm. And in pre preschool, she was two and a half or something, there was another little girl. Little Sophie, everyone always called her Little. It was always a pen because Little Sophia was little. She was, she was little, right? Yeah. And I remember having the teacher say, well, Little Sophia can do this, and I don't see why your child can't. And I got tired of it, and I finally pointed out that Little Sophia was actually six months older than my child. Wow, yeah, and there you go. And, and you know, this is a, a big difference. Um, mm -hmm. And we have our cutoffs for school. Right. And people would tell you, you know, you send your child at the cutoff. But here's the thing. You could be as much as 18 months younger mm -hmm. than the oldest child in that classroom right. at age five, you know, in kindergarten. Uh, and, you, and then you realize that, right? Some kids are, are going to school at six and a half. Some are starting at five. And when you have that range of development within that same classroom, it's not surprising that as a clinician, I often get referred to the children that are the youngest in the class because they seem to have problems. And yet much of it is just a matter just, of development. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Well, pragmatically, what can we as parents, as teachers, and as a system, like, you know. Well, it's a struggle because, you know, there's, there's so much demand today to standardize, to have everything the same, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that everybody's going through the same process at right. the same time. 
uh, which is sort of like the antithesis of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the ability to allow um, differences. I, I like Ken Robinson's work in creative schools. He mm -hmm. talks about, yeah. you know, why do we have to have, why does everybody have to be in the same grade at the same age? You know, why, why, yeah. why, why, yes. we, why do we do that? And of course it makes it easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot easier for organization and structure and all the yeah. rest of it. So we kind of have that production model of school, that, you know, factory, yeah. factory assembly line production model. And um, what we really need is a little bit looser model, yeah. a little bit more stru uh, less structure, with the acceptance that brains are developing, uh, and they may be at different yeah. paces and different, you know, uh, different timelines for that. And but it, but it, it's it's a struggle to kind of um, well, I saw integrate that. that. I saw that in action. Like after we left that school, we went into a Montessori school. My daughter was little, and there are three year groupings, mm -hmm. which yeah, th was th a three year range. Three year range. And it was wonderful. Yeah. Interesting because. In that same three-year grouping, you would have maybe an oldest and a youngest who would have certain things they both did the same, mm -hmm. but a different set of two would have different things they had in common, and it it was a really it's going from there to a sort of all age classroom. It was it? a yeah. really interesting and very and, different. And you dynamic. learn to develop within the context of multiple developmental levels, yeah. and um, certainly a, a, an interesting and, and more open approach. Mm -hmm. Um, and one that could probably work in a lot of different levels, but we mm -hmm. often don't allow it to, to unfold that way. Um, a lot of it has to do, when we talk about uh, those, those managers, self-regulation. Right. You know, self-regulation is what you, how you run your show for the day. Pay attention during the day, mm -hmm. plan, organize, do all the right. things you need to do during that day. But then you say, well, if you do that each day, uh, at the end of the week, you go, oh, there was that thing that I had to do and it didn't get done. Mm -hmm. right? So you say, what you realize now is that those self-regulation managers are just responsible for day-to-day -day activities. The next level of management, there's a component of self-determination. Right. And with self-determination, we want we need to tie together the self-regulation day to day to set goals mm -hmm. and say, now if, if I, I need to do something by the end of the week, and that's the self-determination manager says, we need to get this accomplished by the end of the week. Right. Now it needs to regulate the this self-regulation managers and say, don't do that right now today. Because mm -hmm. if you do that, I know you want to do that and fix that problem right now, but if you do that and do this, we won't get where we need to be by Friday. See, so now you have, there has to be a regulator of the regulators to make sure right. that you're self-regulating in a way that's not just going to get you through the day, but get you through the week right. and so the month and the year. So you do a lot of year. complexity, complexity of task, complexity. complexity of timeline, complexity of different outcomes. There's a lot of yes. moving pieces uh, in that. An incredible level of integration that, that occurs in the brain, which you know, we, we're beginning to understand somewhat. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's so much more effective when I work with clients to use the metaphors rather than get into the details of how the brain's working. Right. Because they can, under, they, can get the, they can grasp the concept here. You know, you've got to be structured. But then that, that come, the issue then becomes, what is it that you want to do long term? Right. You know, what are your goals right. for self-determination? Self-determination is about long-term planning, about goal setting. Right. Uh, and so now I often have to get into that process with individuals to help wake up that manager and strengthen it, yeah. and, and strengthen it. And, and there's also a self-realization component there, too, self-awareness, another manager at that level. You right. know, are you aware of what you need to be doing? Um, are you aware of your strengths and weaknesses? Are you aware of what other people's strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. are? Right? You have to have some idea of that in order to begin to integrate that self-regulation process more effectively. Right. Does everyone get to that phase? I'm thinking of adults. They well, that, they do, well. Mm, there you I'm go. Not sure <laughs> every, that every, stage. every whether you whether you um, whether you're ready or not. There's a there's a, around age 12 to 14. Yeah. Most brains will jump into this phase. Now, just because you're in it doesn't mean you're good at it. Okay? Right. So there's there's some rudiments <laughs> of it there, right? Uh, from from very early, we're 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 trying it out right. with self determination. Like right. five year olds can be self determined for about a couple oh, minutes. Oh yeah, they can. Right? <laughs> they can be very self determined, but then they forget about that, yeah. right? And it's self determined for what? For something right now. So that so you see it kind of like emerging, but then around twelve to fourteen, it becomes very very big in kids' lives. In mm -hmm. other words, this is the point at which they want to believe that they are their own boss. <laughs> right, and the reality is they are. You know, the, mm -hmm. the curtain of Oz parts at twelve to fourteen, and a child can come to realize there's nothing you can do or say mm -hmm. to make me do anything. Because they now they're on their own boss. We're going. Please keep the curtain closed till about eighteen, maybe twenty five. Yeah, yeah, would be better, when right? Moved out. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but instead, it's like you're you're faced now with this brain that realizes that it's in charge. That's why middle school and must be so terrifying because you've got all of these kids <laughs> with this curtain parting at the same time. Right. Right. And they all want to be their own bosses. But here's the problem. They don't necessarily have the self-regulation to pull that off. Oh, right? Okay. Yes. So, so integrating that self-determination, self-regulation is one part they have to do, but also right. recognizing what they can and can't do down here you know, and realizing they may need help. And, mm -hmm. and also refining that self-determination. For self-determination for what, right? I, mean, I want to right. wear what I want to wear. I want to eat what I want to eat. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do. Okay, but what do you want to do? 
I want to play video games 24-7. See, now what you realize is that that is not really a self-determined brain. Because self-determination is at, at its highest levels is about delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. See, putting things off right now so that you can get something you want later, right, right. seeing into the future. But many brains at that age are pretty much tied to their reward center of their yes. brain, which is <laughs> what I want right now, right? That immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. And so when I see that, see, I, I engage in a process called motivational interviewing, where we begin to engage the child and say, you know, I, I can help you get anything that you want. You know, I'm not here to, to make you do what your parents want you to do mm -hmm. or anybody else wants you to do. I'm here to help you do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I can help you get anything that you want or do anything you want to do. I just need to know what it is you want to do. See? And if they tell me, play video games 24-7, mm -hmm. I don't push back. Right. You know, that's okay. Here's what I would do. Now you're out of school. You're playing video games 24-7. How's it going? So, so you've created this self-determined world. Now let's live in it for a while and see how it's going. Would your parents let you keep doing that? I mean, they're, they'd be pretty upset that you're home playing video games all the right. time. Who's paying for this anyway? Probably them. So if you don't have any money, oh, I have $400 in the bank. Okay, how long would that last you? So after that's gone, see, <laughs> see so you follow through this chain of what you created, this self-determined world you created. Right. Now, let's live in this for a while and see how it goes. And after a while, they begin to realize, wow, it's not going very well. You know, then mm -hmm. go, that was a stupid idea. You said it, not me. See, I never push back. I never lecture them or tell them. But that's a little door open there. Yes, to uh -huh. become more self-realized about how bad this self-determined plan of theirs is, right? <laughs> and because they're going to get there, so okay, that's not a good one. So, what do you really want to do? So now, with twelve to fourteen-year-olds, I can with older high school students, this can we get it pretty quickly. Right. With younger kids, they have no idea about the future. So I'm really right. trying to build a little career maturity in their minds. You know, mm -hmm. what do you think you'd want to do in the, in the future? But that may be down a little down the road. How about mm -hmm. we just kind of focus a little closer? Do you want to graduate from middle school? That's, you know? good. That's a good goal. <laughs> you might want to get to high school, right? Is that, would that be something you might think you want to do? If they mm -hmm. say no, see, i got to work on that. I have to work on helping them walk through the, their plan of leaving school early. How's that mm -hmm. going? See, so i gotta, I got to make sure I walk down every path they want to go and explore that till the, til the, they come to the self-realization mm -hmm. that I need a plan that's going to be better than this. And so now I can help them with that. So they say, well, let's at least get through middle school. So if you want to get to eighth grade and pass all your courses, here's what you have to do this marking period. Right. But to get there, here's what you have to do this week. To get there, here's what you have to do tomorrow. Right. And so I try to bring that future closer to the present moment and say, now, to get that done, here's strategies you're going to need to get that done. See, mm -hmm. I can help you with those strategies so you can get what you need to do today so you can get the places you want to get to later on. Right. So I'm trying to build the self-determination in the brain. Often I find if you can, if you can do that with a, with a 12 to 14-year-old brain, very often the self-regulation difficulties we see start falling into line. Because, because he's been trained to go down the path. that upper yeah. level manager, yeah. and now he's yeah. got better control over the self-regulation than he had before. And it was always there. It was just not being utilized as effectively. But now, even with that in place, some kids still have self-regulation difficulties, mm -hmm. and now I need good strategies to help them overcome right. that so they can achieve their goals. Right. I want to touch on one more of these elements. I know we're running short on time. Because it's so, about so this interesting. All day, all day. But no I, I just yes. want to make sure I mention this idea of self-generation, which gets into this sort of ethical <clears> and moral component, which is right. also part of this executive function Well, there process. you go. So the, you have this self-determined manager, and he's setting goals for you, right? right. And, but then, you, you, then, then there's this upper-level manager that has to ask some other questions, because you can set goals and you can accomplish them, but then you just have to start thinking to yourself, gee, you know, is it okay if these goals that I set are mm -hmm. really detrimental to other people? Or to the environment, right. or you know, if is it okay for me to crush everyone in my path, you know, to get what I want, <laughs> you know, because I have these goals and I'm right. going to get it no matter right. what. You have to start thinking: is that a good thing? See, so now you're beginning to consider morality and ethics, mm -hmm. and what's good behavior, what's right behavior, mm -hmm. what's appropriate behavior. See, but that's the self-generation manager that's in charge of that, and he's kind of knocking on the door, saying, you know, I think you might want to start thinking about these things. Yeah. But see, many people, you can go through life and never have that manager in place. And, you know, never develop him. No. <laughs> so the, the impetus to do that, you know, we have those questions might arise and you ignore them. Mm -hmm. See, but so the brain, executive function is about the questions we ask. When you ask those questions, mm -hmm. you have to open the door for the possibility mm -hmm. of saying, yeah, I want to think about that. And see, now we're into the, the realm of morals and ethics. Right. And, and self-generated means you, you're self, you, you're, you develop a self-generated uh, view of yourself mm -hmm. that integrates with others in a, in a more moral and ethical way. And we hope we all get there. We hope we get there. We, we, hope, we hope we get there, right. And, you know. and there's many things structured in society to help us do that. Yeah. But some people find their own path, their own path. And some people ignore the signals, right? right. <laughs> and, um, and, and go on with their self-determined ways. But, you know, we know that that's, that can be detrimental to the rest of us. Right. And so that's always a real concern. Well, 
as we're kind of wrapping up this, can you leave us with a couple of thoughts of things that a parent or a teacher could do that's helpful and a couple of things that are totally not helpful? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think adopting a patient stance is one of them, which is um, we often look for, when we see difficulties like this, mm -hmm. um, we often want to uh, make changes immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's yes. sort of, sort of like the switch is off. We want to switch it on. Let's flip this on. Right? Over. There we go. We're there done. you go. And, and, <laughs> and if you're going to do an intervention, make sure that that flips that switch on. Right. But the reality is that over time, development is, is, is not nice and steady. It's like very, very choppy. And yeah. so some parents will say, He's, I saw him do it for a week and he hasn't done it for a month. And now it's back and now it's gone. Right. So you're say, well, that's, that's the way it is. But that's like a process of growth development where what we're going for is more on than off. Mm -hmm. See, any given time it might be off or on. But the cumulative effect here is over time we're looking for it to be more on than off. Right. And, and as we get older, for that, for that more on to be you know, increasing. <laughs> so the patience is that this is, you know, it's not going to be perfect. There are going to be times when the switch is off. And it could be off for weeks. Mm -hmm. But then you know, we're working at trying to get it back on. Right. is what we're trying to do. <laughs> and so we're just looking for more on than off. Patience is a critical piece Patience here. Is <laughs> and the education piece, you know, don't, don't fault the brain mm -hmm. uh, when you see it's not doing things. The first, and especially if it's going after rewards that it, mm -hmm. it wants and can't get them, right. that's a real tip off. You know, this is a rewarding, something that's rewarding to this individual, he's not getting mm -hmm. it. Say, I'm sorry about that, didn't realize you didn't know how to do that. We have to get you help to understand how to do that better. Yeah. And some education here, because it's really a process of education, educating the brain you know, to be more effective. And if you think of it that way, you just say, what's missing in your education? What don't you know yet mm -hmm. to do and how to do it? And now, who can help us do that, right? Because sometimes as a parent, it's very difficult to help in that process. That sometimes shows. it can, but other times it's better to seek somebody else to, <laughs> f with some assistance, right? That is true. Okay. So know when you need, when you need that. That's one, another piece of it, right? That's know an awesome when you're out of class and yeah. you need some help. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been an incredible conversation. And I don't want it to stop, but it has to. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, <laughs> with me today has been Dr. McCluskey. We've been talking about the executive function and brain development. And I'm Teresa Martin from Lower Cape TV. Thank you for joining us.